Hello folks, how we doing? I'm back. I've been away on holiday for a week and God, that blabbing flies, man, honestly. I don't know if anybody else is having this problem at the moment, but these little buzzy, they're not really as big as blue bottles, but they're buzzing about and they're driving me uh, blabbing insane. So anyway, anyway, I'm back. I've been away for a week. We've been on holiday and you might have seen poor young Robbie on the very first day of the school holidays. Had an altercation with the trampoline. I'm going to go to the polytunnel and see if it's any better for the flies in there. He had an altercation with the trampoline and he fractured his ankle. So we ended up in a and &E for hours and hours and hours and eventually got home at two o'clock in the morning. But we decided to go away anyway. We were going away in the car. We're doing a staycation. So we've been up to Lossy Mouth for a week. Absolutely beautiful part of the country. So I'm back at the plot after a week away. And I've got mixed feelings about it. So there's some good things and there's some not so good things. So my mum and dad very, very, very helpfully and very kindly have been coming up here and they've been watering all the plants, especially inside the polytunnel. But the weather over the past week down here, where the plot is in Linlithgow, has been a bit crazy. It's been absolutely roasting and there's been loads of rain the last few days. So the weeds have gone absolutely bonkers. And while I've been away, the uh, rabbit has been back in somehow so i've got to do more work on the fence so that all the strawberry plants because because I, I covered everything else up that the rabbit was eating all the strawberry plants have been nibbled somehow managed to get into the polytunnel under the under the I, i'm spinning you around as if i'm spinning the camera around hold on in the door underneath it or something somehow luckily didn't cause too much damage in here just nibbled away on the two aubergine plants that are by the door over there. They were going to go anyway. They they weren't doing very well. I was going to replace them anyway. So they've they've been something just caught my eye down there. Some some creature. Hold on a second. I'll spin you around and we'll have a look. Bye. This this video is going to be all over the place. Look at this. Look at this creature down here. Hold on. This is what caught my eye. Look. I don't know what that is. Anybody know what that is? Let us know. But it's in the polytunnel. I'm not sure if it's a friend or a foe. I don't know what it is. I don't. I might try one of these picture things and see if I can find it. But whilst I've got the camera around this way, I said the rabbit's been in here. And look, let's see. I've, I've been... It looks all tatty back here because I was getting really, really chewed off. So I started pulling out all the weeds. So it looks a bit tatty. So we'll come here first. This is where the aubergines were. And you can see I've taken them out. They weren't doing very well. And then the blooming rabbits come and nibbled at them. So I've replaced them with two tomatoes. So there's the, the look a bit sired and sired and tied tired and sad that's just about some things up at the moment looks a bit tired and sad at the moment because i haven't really got any roots established or anything give them a week and they'll be looking absolutely brilliant in there those suckers but if i have a look over here see if we can see there it is look see the blooming rabbit droppings where it's been in and there was some more over here somewhere hold on not that you need to see them back there somewhere anyway they were knocking about but man, it really, really, really hacked me off anyway. But let's show you what I've been up to. So when I came back, it was a bit of a tomato jungle back here. I mean, honestly, what a state. My poor mum and dad must have had some trouble getting to those halo pots back there. So I've been trimming them off. So you can see all the way down, down to the bottom. If I get a better angle, I've been trimming all the bottom sort of sets of leaves off. Apart from that one there that I've missed pretty much up to the first set of fruits and you can see some of them have got fruits on there growing away and they're all looking grand the cucumbers are looking good we've got plenty of plenty of cucumbers on and we have let's have a look about the only that's just flowering that one i picked one this morning i should have should have left it on for you to see but you see there's another couple there and over here hold on hold on what else was i going to show you while we're in here having a much about i've got my oh there you go look Peppers are starting to grow. Can you see that? There we go. First proper looking green pepper. Was the one over? Ah, this one's even bigger. Look at that one there. You can see it there, looking grand. There it is. Anyway, that's enough for mooching about the polytunnel because if nothing else, it's absolutely roasting here. So like I say, I've, I've been a bit cheesed off because that blooming rabbit's been back in. Not going to let it get us down. I'm not gonna let the rabbit win. Me versus the rabbit. We're gonna we're gonna fettle it one way or another. Perhaps I'll have a nice rabbit pie at some point. 
Um, anyway, let's go back outside. And if the flies don't drive me around the twist, as well as the rabbits, I'll show you what I'm going to be up to out there as well. So let's have a wee walk down here. So the bed where we've got the brassicas in, I can see some rather ominous looking flowers poking up the top there. And there's some just starting to appear there. And there I was hoping it's just going to be a weed, but I suspect it's something starting to bolt in there. Some of those turnips must be ready. And there's another set of yellow flowers as well. So something's definitely bolting. I don't know if it's the snow wall ones or the purple tops, but they'll be getting picked today anyway. The kale, the kale's going great guns. It's got absolutely massive. So I'm going to be picking some of that. Uh, what else? The shallots, they're not far off being ready. You can see they're just starting to... Just starting to yellow a bit there, so they'll be they'll be ready soon. The garlic, I, I don't know if it's, it's just about ready to pick. You can see the outside leaves starting to yellow. I've seen some horror stories of people's garlic, and I've seen some absolutely brilliant ones. So I'm I'm, I'm swithering whether to whether to pull or not. The problem is, as soon as I open this this lid here, this as soon as this goes up, I don't think it's going to go back on because it's so green and bushy up the top here yeah, I'm never going to get it all back in the cover so once the cover's up the garlic's coming out so I don't know I might risk it we'll see what else is getting done today over here this is going to cheer us up the, beet the beetroot's been absolutely brilliant so some of that's going to get harvested today so I'll show you what sort of harvest we get from that mind I don't kick the buckets that's what I've been using to do the weeding some of the weeds were horrendous actually let's come over here I'll show you what I've pulled out the day so we're co starting to compost them but look at this in here, man. Look, there's absolutely blooming millions of horrible, horrible. And look at this. The weed's just taking hold. I've only been away for a week. And look at it. And look, you see here as well, these bloody crackerjack marigolds that I had there. There. You can see the stalks. The blooming rabbits have had them because they can't get a hold of anything else. Oh, honestly, me and these blooming rabbits. But you know, it's it's so. Oh, look. Tell you what, while we're here. I've covered them up now, but you can see the strawberries, look, where they've eaten all the flipping leaves off and they don't touch the blooming weeds that are in there, do they? Just come in here to, to Mark's allotment buffet and help themselves to, to the things that they fancy best. <laughs> um, on the upside, the Kelsey onions are looking absolutely cracking, look at them. They're brilliant. And they must have been getting hungry because they've had a little bit of a nibble at the sweet corn, so I've put this temporary cover on to stop them from nibbling at that. That's better. After having a bit of a, a rant and a rave about the rabbits and whatnot, I think I was probably talking a bit fast in the first part of this video as well, but I was, I was so flipping cheesed off with what's been going on. Anyway, this is fairly big going to cheese us up. Look at the beetroot here, look at this. This is absolutely marvellous. It's going great guns. If I remember right, we've got three different varieties in here. We've got the um, Bolt Hardy one, which I think is at this end. We've got the excuse my pronunciation, Kyogia, I think you pronounce it, down this end. And right at the very far end from seed, we put in some of the golden burr peas. So all the others were plug plants, the golden burr peas are sown direct. So I think the golden burr peas will be a while yet. And whilst I'm here, as seems to go everywhere on everybody's plot is some of this. So that's getting picked out, that's getting picked out. There's another bit there. Might as well get the weeds while we're here. And then we can get into the good stuff. So some of the some of the beetroot's multi-sown, some of it's just single sown. And you'll you'll see when we pull out the, the sort of difference that that makes. So uh, maybe it's not. That's a decent, decent sort of size one there. So I'm using the trusty red bucket again. In it goes. And you can see there, that's just about perfect size to be picking. It's absolutely brilliant. That is. And lots lots of people eat the leaves off the beetroot. I'm not a not a fan of using the beet leaves, so I'll I'll put them in the in the compost bin, I think. Um so some of some of them like like I don't know where you kind of see from where you are the angle, angle you're at. Some of them just aren't quite as big as some of the others, and some of them grow weird weird shapes like that, but you know what? They're still gonna be absolutely cracking and I'm, I'm just sewing I'm a little bit behind because of of things that have been going on like you say Robbie poor Robbie fractured his ankle and we've been away for a week so I'm, I'm getting some more beetroot sewn so I'll have a a second sewing of this beetroots to go in here 
which will be, be great. Some of this is looking fab. Look at this. So you can see we've got two come out here together, and that's the that's the multi sown, which is bigger than I thought it was going to be actually. Uh, see what else we've got. Another two multi sown ones looking good. All right, you don't need to see me pulling all this beetroot out, so we'll whiz around and I'll come back to you once I've got the full harvest. Ah, the flies again. <laughs> well, apart from the flies, that has fairly a bit cheered us up. So you can see this, there's still, apart from this weed, get rid of that weed, there's still plenty of beetroot left in there. So you see down the bottom, the golden fir peas still growing strong, just a little at the moment. Some of the ones that you can see left in there are small, whether they've been multi-sown, you nearly always get one that dominates and gets bigger and one that stays smaller. So these are all the smaller ones that are left in and another weed. It's great for successional sowing, so I haven't got it all at once, but I've got absolutely loads and it's so much more than I thought it would be. So I'm just going to, I'm going to trim them all down, including funny shaped ones that still taste good, but some of them are absolute, some of them are monsters. I mean, look at the size of that. It's an absolute beauty. Getting attacked by flies again. <laughs> I'm going to be getting some of that fly spray, I think, for the next time. And if I trim this, get all the leaves off this, just to show you the sort of actual size of it. Look at that. It's a monster, that. There it is. Right. So, this big mass of pilot beetroot you can see here is now sort of going to get trimmed down, topped and tailed. I'd only be taking all this stuff home. See, it's going to go in the compost bin, make some great compost, ready for the stuff to go next year. I'll get this all trimmed down and I'll show you what I'm left with. And there we have it. Doesn't look too bad. The sort of lighter pinky coloured one over the far side there next to the bed, that's the Kyogia one. And this one here is the Bolt Hardy F1. It's a pretty decent haul. You can see it from from above there that's going to keep us going for quite a while i'll probably do two different things with that some of them will cook them and have them roasted with various different meals and most of them i'm going to boil and then chop up and i'll get it pickled and that'll keep for absolutely ages and if i just spin the camera over here just to show you just how many still left in the bed where it's been multi-sown you know and they're still going to keep growing so in the next few weeks we'll get another picking for that and hopefully by then all the rest of the other ones will just be ready to come in. And that's all the leaves in there. I'm, I'm, I'm swithering whether to chuck them in the compost or whether to use them now, because there's so many of them. Isn't there a, I might have to Google it. I'm sure there's something called beet leaf soup. Is that a thing? I don't know if that's a thing or not, but I'm gonna look it up and I'm gonna see if it is. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fly over there to the middle bed where those things have got flowers on. We'll see what's going on there and we'll see what we can harvest. Back with you in just a jiffy. Let's have a look at what's been going on in here then. So we'll follow the yellow flowers down. Indeed, it takes us to a purple top turnip that you can see. It's a bit small, but it's bold. It's probably the weather that we've had recently. I say it's been really, really hot, really humid, really wet, just a bit. Uh, so, you know, folk, I've seen loads of folk having problems with the onions. I think I've got one over there that's got a scape on it that's going to have to come out. It's not quite grown yet. Look at this, there's a blooming moth just gone inside that nest. Good job I spotted that. That'll be all of these blooming caterpillars everywhere. It would just add to the rabbits. <laughs> anyway, there's another yellow flower here. Let's pull this one out. Oh man, look at that. That's it. Look at that. That's tiny. Uh, it's, we could call that a micro turnip and I could probably sell it for twice the price uh, in some fancy fancy restaurant somewhere this one over here bolted as well again pretty small i mean still edible you still cut them up and still use them they're just not very big they aren't and there was one more that's just going to seed over the far side there again that one's a lot better it's, it's not massive they're not they're not huge but you know what they'll get eaten but the the white snowball ones, I'm not going to pull them out just yet, but you probably, I don't know, you probably can't quite see them on the angle there. I'll, I'll show you right at the end there what they look like, but these are, a, these are a fair old size now, actually. They're looking a lot better. And there's one, just one left, is there? Maybe it's two. 
but the purple top ones are looking pretty good as well so we'll we'll get some big ones from there but the kale the kale's looking good i'm going to get a picking from that there's, there's i think there's six or nine no there's nine kale plants there and there's far too much kale for what i'm going to use so i'm going to pick it chop it up chuck it in a container and stick it in the freezer and then just use it in portions for chucking in stir fries or, or whatever so i'm going to get the net back down on this we'll get these trimmed up and i'll show you everything we've got right at the end there right back on the handheld so i said i was going to show you those little white turnips just before i pop the cover back on there you go hopefully you can see them there you can see they're going great guns in there and another one there going not be long before they're ready to pick there's the monster kale that you can see a little bit better now as well so that's going to be getting picked chopped up and put in the freezer and if i just have a quick dander over here there's all the beet leaves in there and here's another shot of today's harvest so it comes to something when your beetroot is bigger than your turnips but uh, i guess some some you win some you lose one of those one of those days anyway so i think that's just about it for today a bit of a day of ups and downs some good things some bad things great harvest with the beetroot absolutely cracking those little turnips i mean they'll be absolutely grand as well even though they've bolted and they're not very big they'll still be really really tasty cucumbers going great harvested a couple of them the onions you saw the onions looking absolutely belted down the bottom there some other stuff's looking absolutely brilliant but then the downs where they're <clears throat> in a rabbit has been in nibbled at all the strawberries nibbled the aubergines which wasn't the end of the world but it's had a little bit of a go at the sweet corn not not too bad a thing but i've put a temporary cover on it so i think for the rest of today i'm gonna batter on fixing this i, I tell you what i'm i'm this close to tearing that whole blooming fence down to where somebody else has sort of bodged it together and just replacing the whole thing because at least i know if i've done it it's been done properly and it's been done right and there'll be no problems with it so i might repair it I might just tear the whole thing down but that, that may be a winter project so I, th I think I will repair it and then say one of these winter projects get it teared down get a proper fence put up and in good condition with a chicken wire buried into the ground so nothing can bore through nothing can get in you know that sort of thing and then we'll see how we get on but until then we'll keep fighting the good fight anyway that's me done for today if you like what we're up to in the channel please think about subscribing doesn't cost you a single penny and you can have a good laugh every time a rabbit gets in here and really winds me up anyway that's me done for today we will see you on the next one bye for now folks